Good morning. I'd like to begin with some words from a speech President Ronald Reagan delivered in 1985 at Arlington National Cemetery in observance of Veterans Day. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers, in our mind, as old and wise. We see them as something like the Founding Fathers, grave and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one that they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for us, for our country, and all we can do is remember. At Bishop Gorman High School, we recognize a lot of awards. Our many, many sports teams are notorious throughout Las Vegas, throughout Nevada, and throughout our country for their successes and their skill. Our co-curricular clubs of mock trial, speech and debate, creative writing, and robotics, just to name a few, take victory after victory every year. Our theater guild is nationally ranked and deservedly well accomplished. Last year, campus ministry through Mike Box, service hours, and coordinating hundreds of people in this very gym to volunteer gained numerous community awards. And our school is home to dozens of scholar students who receive national recognition for their dedication to their studies and testings. We are a school of winners. And as a school community, we regularly honor those who have excelled. It is natural for our community to recognize and to pay respects for people who are able to do things that we may not be able to do personally. It is natural for us to give respect to people who, though they're also gales, they've done things at a level that we haven't matched, that we might not be able to match. This is a part of our culture. Now, as a country, we try to embody that similar level of respect while being on a team. We have national sports teams, national awards for efforts made in medicine, physics, engineering, national awards for community and public service. We also have a very unique culture in this country for our veterans. As a reflection of students cheering for our school's football, volleyball, or soccer team games, we cheer as Americans for those who have served and given the last full measure of devotion in what is the highest honor as a member of the United States Armed Forces. Our nation routinely honors veterans at local functions with prayer or song, at school with our Pledge of Allegiance, and at sports games with the national anthem and color guard presentation, just as we saw when over 16 million Americans watched this weekend's LSU Bama game. There is an awesome history, a powerful lineage, that our veterans and that the armed forces of this country have. Our Department of Defense tells us that there are 1.4 million active members in our armed forces with over 800,000 in reserves. The Army, Navy, and Marine Corps were all founded in 1775, over, excuse me, almost 250 years ago. Our Coast Guard was founded in 1790, almost 230 years ago. And our Air Force in 1907, over 110 years ago. The words courage, loyalty, vigilance, integrity, and service routinely appear in military mottos. More than anything, though, the roots of our military the muddiest force in the history of mankind, are founded upon the protection of one very simple seven-letter word, liberty. America, as a nation of immigrants and of diversity, is unified under one flag, under one God, and under one idea that freedom is worth the fight. Debates were held for months on end on the East Coast states of our country in 1776 to determine whether or not it would have been worth the fight, whether or not it would have been worth the blood expended, the time spent, the money put forth, to achieve independence from tyranny. Parents agonized over the loss of their children in combat. Cities burned in the horror of war, and families shook with every new story of combat. 
But through the gunpowder and smoke, through the pain and struggle, a nation was born. Not a nation of one man on a throne, not a nation of a group of men in a room, but a nation of the people, of us. But as teenagers, all of that is really grandiose. Today, yeah, it's, it's a day of respect and solemn remembrance of those who have served. But it's also a day for us, for people who are not in the services, not just to remember, but to be reminded, not just to be thankful, but to be appreciative of the sacrifices of the tens of millions of men and women who have dedicated their lives for us, dedicated their fortunes and their sacred honor so that we may be able to sit where we are today, literally in these bleachers, comfortably in air conditioning and under a roof. Today doesn't make our veterans any more worthy of praise. Their worthiness has been bought for and paid in their time, in their sacrifice, and in their blood. Today doesn't make them more valuable. Rather, today is a day for us, who have not experienced that unmatched level of devotion, to turn to those who have and say, we thank you and your families for your service and all that you've done for us. I'd like to close with some words from founding father and second president of the United States, John Adams. He said, posterity, that's us. You will never know how much it cost the present generation to preserve your freedom. I hope you will make a good use of it. Friends, our nation is founded on the principle of freedom. In this country, in general, you get to do, you get to think, you get to believe, and you get to feel, really, whatever you want. We have the freedom and the privilege of being able to be tired, of being bored, of not caring. Men and women have died so that you may have that right. The only reason that we have that freedom, however, is that we have, standing in front of our nation, a shield of men and women willing to answer the call to duty and defend what is theirs and what is ours. I'm tired too, and it took a little bit more energy this morning to put on my mask uniform. Honestly, I would have loved to stay home and take that extra couple of hours sleeping. But I'm also pretty certain that the 200,000 men and women actively deployed around the world would have also liked that as well. I'm certain that the 1.1 million servicemen and women who have died in wartime would have enjoyed that too. If you wish to properly spend today in remembrance and in observance of the sacrifices that have been made in your name by people who do not know your name, then when we leave this gym and after we enjoy some lunch, give thanks. Give your time to think about, to reflect on, to honor these men and women who have done things that we cannot even begin to repay. Thank you.